Hey everyone, my name is Yaro and you're listening to the DIY Business Magic Podcast. Welcome back, I'm really glad you're here and I'm so grateful for all the beautiful feedback that I received for the podcast. So today I'm coming to you with an episode on social media and online marketing for Interwords. I'm running free monthly workshops every month, <laughs> as the title suggests, and I often hear from people that they really struggle with imposter syndrome. They're really overwhelmed with all social media and they just have a hard time sharing their work, even if they really believe in it and they are super enthusiastic about what they want to do. So today I want to walk you through a presentation I shared at a recent free workshop where we talked about all these things and I shared a bunch of really practical tools and I also offered some journaling prompts for people to explore where their resistance is coming from. I really think this work is super important and very effective if you give it some space. So yeah, if you can, get your journal out. If not, just listen and maybe come back to this another time. Before I really go into what I want to share today, I have a couple of announcements. So first of all, and that's more private, um, I had a birthday this weekend, yay! It was super beautiful and I had a really great time inviting my friends and making it a long weekend, taking a little bit of time off, doing some journaling and planning for the year ahead and it just felt really good to turn 33 to be honest and I'm excited for what the next years are going to bring. Um, one of the wishes and big dreams I had for this birthday was to start a free community apothecary here in Brighton in the UK. And I'm super proud and excited to say that we did it. So I've grown my Patreon over the last year and I've used some of that money that is being pledged to me and my business to um, buy bottles and herbal products. And on Saturday evening, which was my actual birthday, I invited all my friends to a really cozy yoga studio and we strained, bottled, labeled and then packed with little zines more than a hundred bottles that we're gonna share around in the local community here to get more people excited about herbalism and to support everyone's uh, immunity in winter. And for me, I mean, personally, I absolutely love herbalism. It's something that's really important to me. But what made me so happy about it also was that I created a real win-win situation. My patrons get to support something that feels meaningful to them, even with a small pledge. They get access to my courses and programs and free workshops. And I was able to kind of distribute some of that abundance in the local community here. So I'll be teaching more about growing a Patreon and about these alternative ways of sharing ideas and making things happen over the next year. And I'm, I would really love for you to join me, get on my newsletter list and be the first to know when new um, free workshops are coming up. One um, is coming up already on December the 4th, one that I'm really incredibly excited about. And it's all about business planning for 2019. So I'm offering this because I want people um, to get into the headspace of thinking very gently and kindly about their goals for 2019 before the rush in January comes where you see ads everywhere and it just feels like all this pressure to chase someone else's dream. And I want to, I really want to help people to find authentic goals that feel good and doable for them and that reflect the values that they want to live their life by rather than something that you know, is, is a cookie cutter business model that maybe works for someone else. So this is going to be a 90 minute workshop in which we'll explore what we actually want and how that can feel good, what we're willing to invest and how much energy we really have and also what free tools we can utilize to make that happen and how we can get into a habit of planning and structuring our work and doing our own project management in a way that's not boring but actually really satisfying and fun. So if you want to join that, follow the link in the show notes. I'd really like to meet you and you're totally welcome to invite your friends as well. Okay, so now finally I want to share about social media and online marketing for introverts. So the first thing I want to invite us to look at, I invite you to look at is where your resistance is actually coming from. And I really want to say that I think this resistance is completely normal, as is imposter syndrome. I still get this frequently. I'm really happy with my work. I love what I'm doing. I've created something that feels meaningful to me. And yet I have days where I feel shy about sharing and like, you know, I have thoughts like who I am to do this. And 
someone else could do this better and maybe I should just stay in bed. I don't know. Um, and I think that is something that all of us are constantly working with. And it can be particularly hard if you feel quite sensitive or you're an introvert and you find online spaces overwhelming. Or even, you know, local networking can be really overwhelming too. All these things are <laughs> intense and wild and beautiful at the same time. So I think in the last couple of years, social media has really gained even more importance, but it's also become a more busy and more competitive space. And it can feel really hard to stand out and to kind of find our own little niche in this um, very busy environment. So I think that's really valid. And it's just about nailing down what actually feels difficult for you and where your resistance is coming up. So maybe you've made negative experiences with marketing from other companies. Maybe you signed up for something free and you felt like you weren't really receiving something that you had expected or you were marketed to very aggressively or it felt like a pretty cold funnel where you weren't really seen as a person but only as a potential customer to be converted into a sale. Or maybe you have feelings around not wanting to take up too much space. Maybe there's some childhood or school experiences or anything related to formal education that you still feel a little bit stuck with where you're not wanting to stand out or um, attract too much attention. Maybe you're feeling unsure about what we actually have to say and what you have to offer. Maybe you don't want to put people off if you have friends or family following you on social media, for example. Maybe you're feeling a bit shy about sharing about your business because you think it's not relevant to them. Or maybe you're feeling jealous, and I really want to say that that's totally valid too. I feel jealous sometimes, and I'm trying to be just open to that emotion and to see what it has to teach me. So usually when I'm, at, when I'm jealous, obviously that's coming from a desire of, of for having something that someone else has, that where, where I'm maybe not there yet. And I'm trying to not f push that feeling away, but instead to really look at that and see if I can transform it into a goal for myself or if I can walk away from that thinking, okay, this is something that someone has as, so, whoop, someone else has that maybe feels really shiny and attractive to me, but heart to heart, I don't actually need that in my life. So I think, like I said, these are all really valid options or, or, or um, feelings to have around resistance. And I'm just inviting you to sit down with your journal and make a list of things that feel difficult to you there's overwhelm, get clear on where that's coming from on social media. If there's feelings around worthiness, write them down and really make a commitment to yourself to work with them. Um, maybe even with a coach or with some other kind of professional person that can help you with that. The next thing I would like to look at is um, the idea of defining really realistic goals because I think or I see that many people struggle getting clear around social media and online marketing because they're not totally sure what they're trying to achieve. And again, if you're starting a business, that's so valid and completely normal. When I was starting, not only was I not sure who I was talking to or why or what I was offering, I was also really unclear about the places I wanted to be in or the technical tools that I wanted to utilize to make that process as easy as possible for me. So I think a really great next step after looking at your resistance is to define goals that feel authentic for you. And I'll read to you what I have on my list. So I want to really pour energy into online marketing and social media because I want to build community of like-minded people. I want to grow my newsletter list because I know that social media is beautiful and amazing and a great way to connect to people. But at the end of the day, it's also a space that I don't own. Um, the content really isn't mine and rules sometimes change, which is difficult. And that's very different with my newsletter list. That's a more meaningful and intimate way to connect to people. And so that's something I really want to grow. I also want to interact with the world in a meaningful way that doesn't feel overwhelming to me all the time. I want to make a living that feels safe and sustainable. I want to be able to work creatively. I want to learn about new ideas, people and approaches. And I want to share what I'm excited about. So these are my goals and everything I'm doing on the internet is kind of leading back to those goals and that makes it so much easier to get clear. The next thing I want to invite you to think about is what is private and what is public in your life. So again, that's another area where many people 
have some resistance. Maybe you are using an old, previously private Instagram account to now promote your business. And maybe there are some feelings around what you actually want to share with people and what feels private to you. And I would really love you to get clear on those boundaries and to maybe even spell them out in writing. So for me, for example, I'm sharing so much about my private life on Instagram uh, because I really want people to be able to relate to me as a person and not just see me as a business or a brand. I want them to understand what my backstory is, why I do what I do, what my everyday life look like, looks like and what my values are. And my boundary is that I'm not sharing so much about my relationships here in Brighton. I'm not sharing so much about my food or what I'm eating day to day. I sometimes share about my travels, but not always. I don't usually give away my exact location. So I, for example, don't check into a restaurant or something. Not that I expect anyone to be creepy about it, but just feel like, I don't know, that's not something I want to do. Um, and so I also made some space to get clear on that. And I'm, I'm just have this little list in my mind handy to think about my boundaries. So I would invite you to ask yourself what part of your story is most relevant to your work and why do you want to share that? What feels too private to share? What could boundaries look like in terms of time, energy and space? So for example, you also have ideas around how much time you actually want to spend on social media and when you're completely switching off. And what do you like hearing from others? So if you're feeling pretty unsure about how much is enough or how much is too much around private sharing maybe see what other people you feel attracted to and how they are sharing and maybe there's something that you can learn from that and then the next thing i want to touch on is finding the right space for your message so now that you're a little bit clearer around what your goals are what your boundaries are what you're trying to achieve it's good to think about what spaces make sense for you personally when I was starting out in business, I, I thought that I needed to be everywhere. I wanted to really spread my message and my offerings as far as wide and wide as I could. And I kind of spread myself thin between different platforms. So I was on Instagram, on Tumblr, on Twitter, on Facebook. Is that all? Oh yeah, I also tried this uh, live streaming Twitter related thing, I can't remember the name now, which was super stressful and really freaked me out <laughs> at the time. So I left that. Anyway, all this to say, about a year and a half ago, I deleted my Twitter account, even though I had grown it to about 4,000 followers, just because I really felt that it wasn't the right space for my message. And I was struggling to keep up with... Um, mentions or engagements over there and it kind of became pretty quiet and I think it's not a great idea to list a social media channel on your website that you're not actually using because it looks like maybe your business is no longer active or I don't know you just don't really care about the social media spaces that you're creating so I would really recommend that you think about your message the kind of people that you want to reach and in the different ways in which you want to communicate to them and then choose spaces that are appropriate for that so the choice i now made is to mainly focus on instagram um, and to podcast because i really like having longer conversations with people i'm really visual i love posting on instagram for that reason and i like having the space to kind of have much longer captions that i could have on twitter for example and at the same time i don't want to be on instagram all the time so I'm using a scheduling tool um, where once a week I sit down and I write out a couple of longer posts that then come out throughout the week and then in addition to that I make spontaneous posts about funny things that happen to me resources I found or things that I want to share in the moment and so I'm keeping my profile active but I'm not on there every single day and I'm open to direct messages but again I'm having boundaries around that and then I'm using a tool called ifttt.com where um, I'm cross-posting. So I'm posting on Instagram, but then this tool, which is free, by the way, which I love, is automatically posting to my Facebook business wall, to my um, Tumblr account, and to Pinterest. And so those other three platforms are kind of secondary social media platforms for me. So I want to have my content on there, but I don't want to visit all these different platforms every single day to keep them active either. So I'm really appreciating this opportunity to automate that, and I've been really mindful in how I've set this process up. So this could look totally different for you. Maybe Tumblr isn't a thing for you. Maybe Pinterest is something 
that you want to manage on a day-to-day -day basis. It really just totally depends on what your values and ideas are and what you're trying to achieve. Um, another thing that's quite important to me is my newsletter and I'm realizing that I often share more intimate behind the scenes stuff on a newsletter and that's because I know that the people that subscribe made a deeper commitment to hearing about my work and it feels like a slightly different environment than, than social media for example would be which is also why building a newsletter is such a big priority for me. And again if you're stuck here I would recommend that you think about um, really what works for you personally and maybe look around yourself and see what you're enjoying. Um, so I really love podcasting. This is already my second podcast. My first one, which is a couple of years old, is called Daydream Wolves and it's really grown and it's been such a beautiful way to build an audience and have conversations with people and do so in a way that comes naturally to me and that feels relatively easy. Of course, it does take time. I needed to teach myself a bunch of things. It's still not perfect. I definitely could spend more energy into editing each episode, but it's great fun and it, is, and it often feels more empowering and free than social media, for example. So if you're so inclined, I would really, really encourage you to um, consider podcasting as well as an online marketing tool, but also for many other things, such as just building community and meeting like-minded people. So next I want to touch on a couple of tools that I've, I've partly already mentioned that I'm using. So the first one is, like I said, IFTTT for cross-posting. Another one is the free version of later.com, which I'm using to type out my longer Instagram posts and then schedule them ahead. An alternative that also works for Facebook is Buffer. And another kind of technique that I'm utilizing is to recycle content. So frequently I'll bring back older podcast episodes or um, blog posts or interviews that I've given in other spaces to post about them again on social media. Not all the time, obviously, I don't want to spend, you know, bring up the same old stuff every week, but I do always have new followers and they might not have seen or heard about this yet. And also, once a year passed, maybe if it's still valuable content or still something that I stand for, people's perception of it will have changed you know there's older episodes that I am going back to listen to in my other podcast and the way I hear things really has changed over the years and so that can be really interesting and it's a great way to get more of your content out there and have a regular um, practice of, of posting on social media and then finally sometimes um, I am mapping out plans for promotions and that's useful because I know myself and I know that I'm sometimes getting shy around promotion so I'm sitting down and I'm mapping out what I'm going to talk about throughout the month and I'm challenging myself to post about it in a way that's kind of pushing my set my comfort zone a little bit but that's still comfortable so at the moment and this might well shift and it has shifted in the past but at the moment this looks like um mentioning my patreon two or three times on instagram a week and translating that to other platforms bringing out um a new podcast every Monday and every Friday for the other podcast and then really also every month offering free webinars that anyone can join and this means to me that I am actively growing my audience, I'm building community, I'm talking to amazing people, I'm interviewing folks that I want to introduce to my audience, I'm having great fun and I'm building my Patreon, I'm, I'm making people aware of my other offerings around um, business mentoring and social media support and web design and and I am offering a ton of free stuff and and I'm not doing this within a funnel so I think there's nothing wrong with a funnel technically you could argue what I do is a funnel but but what I think what I mean by that is that I'm not having a system in place where I'm offering free stuff only when I have something to sell or only because I have something to sell and I don't see my free webinars as this kind of tool where I'm just getting people to sign up for something free. I'm like saying hi very briefly, introducing myself, and I'm like, bam, here, buy this. Because honestly, I don't care if most people that show up for my free webinars don't ever buy something from me. And that's because it doesn't matter. I have something excited to share. It doesn't hurt me to have 20 more people on a webinar. I mean, as long as they're respectful, which everyone always is. Um, it just means 
you know, there's more to share for everyone and that's totally cool. And there will always be people who are ready to maybe buy something or work with me or learn more and that's cool, but there's no pressure. Um, another thing or another tool that I'm utilizing that I want to share with you is to create a visual language. And um, I've had other workshops around branding and working with Canva, so do check that out if you're interested to learn more. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I really think it helps to have a consistent brand and visual language for your business um, to make sure that sharing and marketing yourself online feels easier because you're not starting from scratch and wondering what kind of image to use or what colors work for your message every time you have something to say. So great tools to get clear on this, for example, are design-seeds.com, which is a platform full of really beautiful color palettes that you can use um, to explore different moods that you can create. I really love Pinterest to create mood boards. I often get free images from either pexels.com or unsplash.com. And I like batching photography, which means that when I'm out in a really beautiful location, I'll try to get at least 10 really good shots that I can use on Instagram or elsewhere over the next couple of months. So that is just saving me a ton of time. Another area of online marketing and social media, of course, is networking. And there's a few things I want to share about that. Firstly, I would really, again, invite you to be very intentional and very discerning with where you're spending your time and energy. When I was starting out in business, I was in multiple Facebook groups and I was really pretty overwhelmed with all the questions and all the people to meet and all the ideas that were flying around. It was just a lot of noise. And I'm now just in a select few uh, groups and I'm trying to be really present there and answer questions and be helpful. And I've met great people that way and I've also met great clients that way. Um, and then really think about also where you can promote your work in a way that's appropriate. So for example, if you're active in a couple of groups and you're really contributing there and you're like a positive presence, then it is totally valid on Sharing Friday, if that's a thing in that group, to share a free offering that you have or to let people know about a promotion that you're currently running. So get really organized about that. Think about the spaces that you want to inhabit and where you want to show up and share something for free and where you might also be able to share the paid or other offerings that you have. And then finally, form a free mastermind. I love masterminds and I've been in one with three other people for about a year and a half now. We meet every month and we just encourage each other and listen and lend an ear and we brainstorm ideas and I always walk away from these meetings feeling really excited and good about my next steps. Um, so I really value that and I um, one of one of those people in the group um, just messaged um, the other ones and said, hey, I've, I've seen you in a Facebook group. We seem to have a lot in common. Are you interested in thinking about starting a mastermind? And that's totally something that you could do too. Just look around yourself on, on social media and find people that are probably in a different field. That feels really good to me, but it might be different for you. So I love working with people that are in different areas because they bring such different perspectives to my own. And, and then see to really, you know, bring a very mixed group of people together and be realistic about the commitment that you can make to each other. And it might be really nice to be transparent about what you're struggling with. You know, maybe say, hey, I am really struggling with online marketing and putting myself out there. And I'm looking for two or three or five or six or seven other people who are in the same space and we want to hold each other accountable and maybe meet every one month or fortnightly to think about ways in which we can overcome that struggle and get more active on social media and, and explore online marketing that feels good for us. Okay, that was my <laughs> my little exploration. I really hope that you found some encouragement here, that you um, found some tools that might be useful for you, and most importantly, that you know that you're not alone. This is a real struggle that almost every business owner deals with at some point in their journey, and it's just about finding ways that feel good and, and working, working on it and knowing that it's a journey and it's going to get easier definitely month by month and quarter by quarter and year by year so yeah if you have questions let me know if you want to join um, the business planning workshop for 2019 i would so love to have you and you can sign up for that for free um, through the link in the show notes have a beautiful day